Villainous, this is a game that was released recently at Gen Con 2018. In this game, players control famous villains from Disney movies and they try to, oh well, they try to complete a range of different objectives. The game is completely non-symmetrical, different villains playing completely different ways. And so the victory conditions, the actions that you can do, the chains of events you need to trigger to push your objectives are all unique to the villains. Now. Uh, we have several villains in the game, each villain has a board such as this one, these are the boards when they're folded, and we have King John, who will fight against Robin Hood and the Merry Fellows, then we have Jafar, Ursula, and the Queen of Hearts, and of course you cannot have a Disney villain parade without Maleficent. And also we also have Captain Hook, and I set up here the board of Captain Hook, so you can see how the game works. So each player will have a unique villain with a unique board, a dedicated deck of cards, as you can also see from the back there. These are cards that you will play during the game and you will use to perform actions and to gain advantages you start the game with a hand of four then there's a fate deck which again is unique as you can see everything really is tailored to the individual characters and this is bad stuff it's bad stuff for you that um, that affects uh, heroes which of course here are your enemies that the other players will play on your board and so for example here we have of course these pesky kids uh, Lost Boy, Splitting Headache, Pixie Dust, Tinkerbell, Wendy, and so on and so forth. So the enemies that, from the point of view of Captain Hook, since you're playing on this board, you're Captain Hook, all of these kids that are really annoying enemies. As you can see, each board has a number of locations. Each board has, in fact, four locations. Some characters have a location on their board which is locked at the beginning of the game and in some cases you perform certain actions to unlock it. This is one of the things that Captain Hook in fact needs to do to win. Other uh, characters, they have a lock and they can never uh, remove it from the board. They can only move it and that is for example something that Ursula has to figure out how to deal with. Then each, <clears throat> each space on a player's board has a number of icons and some of these icons are here at the bottom, they're always available. Some are at the top and you see the sort of rectangle that surrounds them. That indicates the fact that those icons and the corresponding actions are available only if they're visible, if they're not covered by an enemy hero. So when people from, uh, when your opponents will play cards from your own fate deck on your board, they will place them up here covering those icons and therefore reducing your capability, reducing your abilities, ability to do things. Gameplay is extremely simple, really. During your turn, all you need to do is you move the marker of your villain from the space in which he or she is to another space. You have to move your villain and then you can perform any and all of the actions indicated by the icons on the space in which you landed and that are visible. And you can move anywhere on your board, like from here to here, as long again as it is not locked. So if I'm going here, I can only perform these two actions. If I'm going here, I can perform any and all of those four. We have a nice play right here that tells us what the actions are. This means, means acquire the corresponding number of power tokens. You have this nice ball to, uh, to hold the power tokens of the general supply. So you simply take the corresponding number and you add them to your personal supply. And you will need power tokens to uh, perform effects and to play certain cards. This icon here play a card. If the icon is there once, that means that I can only play one card from my hand. We'll talk about playing cards later though. Then we have activate certain, um, certain cards or items or allies that you place here at the bottom of your board and they may have ability that require the activate action for you to trigger them and take advantage of that. Fate, that means that you draw two cards from the fate deck of another player so if somebody was using the fate action against Hook, that player would take two cards, they look at them, one is discarded and one is played against, against that villain. So fate action is how you get cards 
uh, fate cards, which are negative cards, on other people's boards. Move an item or an ally, and you may have an item or an ally here that needs to be in a specific action to trigger certain effects or to do a certain action. Move a hero, this is how you're moving your enemies. This is very important, for example, Captain Hook, his mission is to find Peter Pan, Peter Pan will appear here and then he needs to move him all the way to the Jolly Roger and to defeat him there. Ursula, to defeat enemies, needs to play cards on them, play binding contracts on them, and then to move them to a specific location when a character with a binding contract goes to the location indicated on the binding contract, the character, the hero is eliminated. As you can see, it's very thematic. Ursula doesn't attack enemies directly. Uh, what she does is, well, she tricks them with bureaucracy and getting them to sign stuff that they shouldn't sign. They should have read the, the small print. So, move a hero, vanquish, that's pretty much fighting, but it's, it's a fancier word, this is Disney. Discard cards should be obvious, you discard cards from your hand, because at the end of your round, you will replenish your hand uh, up to four. We're talking about vanquish, to vanquish someone, you need allies that can fight them. Heroes have abilities that are described here, plus they have a number of strength points. You will play cards from your hand, and sometimes it's an effect, and so you just resolve the effect and then discard the card. Condition. This is a card that you play um, during other players' turns, so the condition cards. So it's a weird name. Maybe you should call them reaction, that kind of so instant action. Items you attach to characters and allies are the ones that you use to fight to fight the enemies, which are the heroes. And suppose that we play this card here, and then we also gave him that nice cutlass. And then at some point, I'm somewhere on the board here, for example, I can play a card because of that icon, and then I can perform the vanquish action, which is in a location on my board, I can activate my allies, possibly with their weapons there, to attack the, to attack one of the heroes in that section of the board. I could use me with his fancy cutlass to attack Tinkerbell. Right now his strength is of six actually because usually it has two plus two if he's in the Jolly Roger plus two with a cutlass. Now he has become pretty deadly despite his looking a little bit like a bumbling fool. So, with the Vanquish action, you can remove a hero if your total strength of the allies that you're using, plus weapons, plus other bonuses, is equal to or higher than the strength of the, of the enemy, of the hero. This is, in, in some the idea, you continue like this, move your character, perform actions, play cards, play fake cards against the opponent, and continue like this until a player has completed the objectives, the victory condition objective for their, for their character, and that is why the game is so different from each player. Prince John, you need to collect a lot of power, you're greedy that way, Jafar, you're looking for the magic lamp at the Sultan's palace and you need to have the genie under your control. Ursula, you need to grab the trident and the crown and place them in Ursula's lair. You have a wicked that is the Queen of Art. Queen of Hearts, you have a wicked that is location, you successfully take a shot. It is just a there's a mechanic to simulate uh, she taking a shot through the wickets and trying to look good and win the game. Here, Maleficent has curse cards in her deck. Again, every deck is different, every board is different. And she has curse cards that she needs to play in her in the locations on her card. Those curses also have, however, restrictions. So the more curses are there, the harder it is for her to place more curses. Also, there are conditions that if met by the other players, the other players can remove the curses. So it's this constant fight between Maleficent to drop curses and protect the curses in place and other players to slow her down. And we said Hook needs to defeat a Peter Pan at the Jolly Roger. This is, in essence, villainous. Villainous is based on a really fun idea. Uh, personally, I like Disney villains much more than I like those pesky heroes or those unsufferable princesses. Finally, you get to go against them. You get to be the interesting character in those stories that you enjoyed. And you just felt that they were just a little bit unfair to the coolest person in the, in the story. Ursula, Captain Hook, Jafar. 
finally the story is written from the perspective that that matters uh, component wise production wise the game is also pretty remarkable uh, i really like those components the quality the material quality of the cards and the boards and the illustrations those uh semi-abstract but still very thematic uh pawns that represent the, the villains all of that is absolutely great but of course gameplay gameplay is the thing we don't just want a game that looks good materially but we want a game that is fun to play now villainous from the point of view of game design i find it's pretty remarkable because it takes the joy of non-symmetrical gameplay and scales it down brings it down to a size to a level of complexity which is actually manageable Non-symmetrical games are fascinating because a lot of replay value, play a different faction, then you're playing differently, you're almost playing a different game because it's fascinating to have to figure out different strategies based on the different opponents you're facing, but they also usually come at the cost of the complexity, entirely different sets of rules based on which faction you're playing, which monsters or creatures you're using, etc. etc. Here you have a core of rules which is extremely simple move your character activate the symbols so sometimes that will allow you to play a card so play the card and do what the card says and yet these characters play in completely different ways because of all the different abilities and effects that have been hardwired into the fate cards into uh, the cards that the player can use and into the icons which icons are available on your board where they are how they're distributed whether or not they can be covered by uh, by heroes for example king john has them a uh, prince john i should say has the has a space on the board in which the icons cannot be covered by uh, by the heroes is the prison so he's trying to move the heroes that are covering icons to that space where they can be stored without causing any damage so completely different ways of playing the game almost different games that you're playing um, in a way that is manageable by adults of course but even by children i played this game with my daughter amelia who is eight she liked it a lot and she had no problem playing with different characters and pretty much reinventing the strategy uh, pretty much playing different games without having to learn entirely different games without having to relearn entirely um, different and new uh, systems of rules that basically means however that uh, depending on how you assign the characters again players are playing um, a game which is more complex or less complex and yet it is the same game at the same time the adults are playing a little more of an adult game and the child a little more of a child's game but it's the same game and it's still balanced and it still has the same system of rules and challenges. To me that's quite remarkable. It's a multi-generational game that plays multi-generationally within a single game session. In general, also the game is just it's just fun. Uh, it's just again simple, linear. The overall idea is intuitive, although the strategies, as I said, uh, aren't always. Uh, and it's just uh, you move, you activate the icons, and yet you still have decisions to make there, based of course on where you want to move, the order in which you want to activate the icons, the chains of events you want to create. Maybe you're going to place that is half. A, covered by a hero but in the bottom action I acquire a power token that allows me to play a card that I couldn't before I acquired the token and the other icon is play a card I play that card I activate an effect that removes the hero now those other icons are available and I get to use them to do something else so uh, it can be again very simple or a lot or consider a bit deeper depending on the character that you have on the sequences and chains of actions that you want to that you want to uh, to activate and you manage to identify so in general villainous gets a pretty strong endorsement endorsement from me it is well produced it looks great it feels great and to manipulate as you are physically interacting with the components of the game gameplay is fun simple intuitive and has different levels of depth based on the character and therein also is a great advantage in the variety of gameplay that it has to offer. In general, Villainous a really, really good game. We had a good time playing it, and I recommend it to families, to people that want to play with their kids. But frankly, even if you were just to play with your adult friends, 
as a uh, as an intermediate game not particularly complex but as a simple game that has some interesting decisions then well villainous could also be a good choice for your game night